everybody, Come a Cowboy here, and happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year right around the corner, and I hope you like that preview of some of the material that you're gonna see in this video. I just pulled some slabs out of the old storage place and gave you a nice gander, and that is the theme of this last video of the year. Give it a like, give it a subscribe, Come a Cowboy, yeehaw. Welcome to the beginning of the end of the year. Uh, and we've got keys for you. I pulled these fresh out of the locker for you to give it a look. And starting off as a book I picked up maybe a couple months ago. Finally got an Avengers one into the collection. Uh, I've always felt this was a fantastic book to have and the prices have kind of settled down. Uh, you can be, you know, fairly selective with copies of this book because they do come on market. Uh, usually in a Sunday Heritage or in any of the uh, sort of quarterly uh, Comic Link or Comic Connect shows. Boom, there it is. Uh, really nice sample here. No Marvel chipping, bright colors, good centering. Uh, for 4.0, off white to white pages, I think it shows quite well. And why should this not be in your collection? Uh, moving right along. Uh, probably one of the bigger pickups I've had over the last couple years. It's a none other than a Tomb of Dracula 10 First Blade. I've shown you this book before. Here it is in 9.6, the old slimmer CGC uh, label. I will not press my luck with the press on a 9.6. Yeah, you want a 9.8. You also don't want to come back a 9.4. Those things can happen. It is the Savannah pedigree book, which makes it even nicer. Great colors, great centering, just really a perfect copy of an iconic book. I love this book. It's kind of held its ground, came down a little bit. There's always a good entry point for that book. And here, uh, here's a big one from the Golden Age. Golden Age has done really well across the year. And look at this beauty, a 1.5, but a great showing because of the uh, cover split. Detective Comics Tech 33. This is only the fourth Batman cover. This is the first appearance of Thomas Wayne. And also, significantly, you've got the origin of Batman uh, in this issue. Of course, it is in uh, Detective Comics 27. Uh, also in here, uh, which is makes this a fantastic, early, important Batman key. And for a 1.5, buy the book, not the grade. Look at the colors on this one. Look how well it shows. Again, just because the issues on the spine uh, gets that lower grade. It will sell certainly as a premium to other copies in lower grade because it just shows so well for the book. Moving along the rack here, of course, pre-code horror has done really well over the last several years and continues to do so. And here's a fantastic fears number five. Uh, you know why this book is significant, don't you? It is the first artwork by Steve Ditko contained uh, in this book. And it's a great book in and of itself, just a great pre-code horror. I'm always buying pre-code. Uh, as I've said before in other videos, I try to buy it raw because I like the book in hand. Sometimes I will read it, uh, but if not, I will get it slabbed. And here's another book I'm proud to have taken home in the last month and a half. I got this off Comic Link. It's none other than a Fantastic Four 52 in 80 condition. These books have come well off their 2021 highs. I think it's a good entry point. The movie's out and it's going to finish its run and we'll you know, sort of the interest will dissipate for a period of time about Black Panther, but he will always be a part of the MCU. He will always have his solo films in one shape, form, or another. And I think the future bodes really well for this fantastic, important superhero. And I caught this off, I'll, I'll admit to you, off a tracking bid off Comic Link. You know what that is? On Comic Link, if you participate in their auctions, instead of like watching the lot, which would be a much nicer design to their website, uh, you've got to uh, either bookmark it, uh, which is a pain, or you could just place an early bid on any of the books. Uh, you won't get it if it's early enough, but you might. And so I put a tracking bid on this one, I think at around $2,600, which is right around where the price it would go at. Uh, I was expecting maybe to go a little bit more because uh, it's a really nice showing copy. 
and I got the book. So that's kind of one of the things you got to know about Comic Link. If you enter in tracking bids, uh, lo and behold, you may get the book home. Uh, you know, and I can't complain. Uh, pulling stuff right off the shelf here. Here's another Fantastic Four. It's uh, issue 48. Boom. Uh, this is Fantastic. First appearance of the Silver Surfer and Galactica. Uh, and this is the old CGC label. Can you see that with the really smaller fine print? These older labels, for some reason or another, go for a bit more of a premium. Uh, then the contemporary ladle. I don't know if that means they uh, graded a little tighter during those years in that era. We just don't know, that's speculation. Uh, but it is, as they say, old label goodness. I love this book. It's also off its peaks. I think it's a good time to participate if you've got the funds set aside and if you're looking to buy. Uh, this is certainly an iconic, excellent book and we'll see where the Silver Surfer and Galacticus go uh, in the MCU, in the movies, in the months and the years ahead. If they do Secret Wars, of course, these will be very important characters. And they might. Moving right along, here's a book I've touted for a while and I just simply love. It is, you know it, none other than Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, issue number one in 5.5. Five. Now, if you know this book, you know it is notoriously difficult to get in any kind of mid-grade and certainly upper grade is rare, hard to come by. This book usually is a straight beater and you can get it, you know, in the sort of 2.5 to a 4.0 grade, you know, in this 1,000 to 2,000 to $2,500 range or so. Uh, but when you get to uh, mid-grade copies, uh, it gets a little pricier, of course. But it's also a book that is particularly hard to get in those grades compared to its peer group. You know, I just showed you that uh, Avengers 1, 1963 in 4.0. You can find that book, I think, a little bit more readily in grade than you can uh, this bad boy. It just, maybe it wasn't collected as much, who knows, at the time in the 1960s. Uh, most of these copies you find are beaters uh, and I absolutely love this book. And the cover is just really damn cool. You've got a Stanley story. Of course, you've got the iconic Jack Kirby artwork. Great book to have. Last but not least, a little bit of holiday cheer for y'all. None other than Archie Comics 50. You don't see this being sold that often because collectors, why would they sell it? It's just a great book to have in your collection. The classic headlights copy right there. Oh my gosh, this is too good. It should say on the label, classic cover, because in the eyes of collectors, it, it absolutely is. Uh, there's Betty uh, draped over the couch, uh, and there's Archie gandering on from the picture frame from, gosh, 1951. I mean, can you imagine the book's almost 75, almost 75 years old? Uh, and it's a great, fantastic one. So. Man, I hope you all like the books. You know, the peak inside the vault uh, here in Northern California where the comp out, comic cowboy yours truly resides. I wish you all the best, a happy new year, a great Christmas, great holidays. Uh, and I'll see you more with new content. Give it a like, give it a subscribe. Do pop a comment down below. I read all that stuff. I like hearing from everybody. I like participating in the community. I'm also on Instagram, Comic Cowboy. I'm not selling books, folks. I'm just showing this stuff. I don't deal, I don't have a business. I'm not buying ads. You know, I'm not on WhatsApp or um, whatnot, I should say. 